A little over 24 hours with the deadly plane crash in East Hartford, where now confirmed victim Arian Prevela still remains at the burn center in Bridgeport. According to sources near negotiations, the Big 12 Conference will remain at 10 teams and not expand. For UConn, they lose out on about $20 million worth of television revenues. Breaking news from Eastern Tennessee, nearly 500 acres in and around the Great Smoky Mountain National Park has been torn apart and authorities are not ruling out arson. The Sikorsky deal involves hundreds of millions of dollars in incentives. However, lawmakers in the union still have to approve. For every dollar the state gives Sikorsky, they anticipate a $96 return on their investment. It was almost a clean sweep in the Senate until one member voted no. And we still have a lot more to cover today. A new warning about a scam at rest stops on Connecticut highways. What state police want you to know. The biological mother of the baby boy who nearly starved to death is outraged with the Department of Children and Family. She wants people to know her side of the story. And one person is dead after an accident during rehearsal for a Cirque du Soleil show in San Francisco. Police say an equipment operator was killed during setup for the show at AT&T Park. Ricky Baxter has been putting this great display on for the past four years. He really enjoys Halloween in this time of the season. But what he treasures most is giving back to the people less fortunate. With General Electric set to move its headquarters to Boston next summer, they are looking for a potential buyer. And they found one in Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart has agreed to buy the campus and expand their very own for $31.5 million. The future of the 66-acre campus was always in question once General Electric announced it would leave Connecticut. Now it's officially off the tax rolls. It is a real opportunity for us to be a center of excellence. State Senator Tony Huang says he recognizes that Fairfield may now find itself in a financial bind, but says a reinforced partnership with Sacred Heart will have its benefits. At the end of the day, I'm fitting for this to win. And, and to win is creating more jobs, creating more momentum, and fitting this state and this town and technologies into the 22nd century. General Electric is the single highest taxpayer in Fairfield. Sacred Heart paid $31.5 million for the campus, which will be devoted to computer science, computer engineering, and cybersecurity. In a statement, the university's president said, Our strategic plan calls for thoughtful expansion of our campus footprint when opportunities arise that make solid business sense and strengthen the institution and its future. With presidential-elect Donald Trump making infrastructure a top priority in this country, could we potentially see some change here in Connecticut? For places like I-84 here that runs through Hartford, it would greatly benefit if built underground. One person looking to contribute to a new road project is Shane Pelchik. He's the guy who operates pavers and other heavy equipment on sites. Connecticut is, you know, a place that we're the center of everything. We're the center of Massachusetts, New York. I mean, and the highways, the bridges, everything needs to be pretty much redone. It's been a while. The plan presented by longtime Congressman John Larson would submerge I-84 from Hartford to East Hartford, which is at odds with a host of other options state transportation officials have presented. But nothing can happen without a commitment of cash. It's less about any particular project than about how to finance and fund them. Connecticut's congressional delegation want to see anything get done when it comes to infrastructure. They agree it needs to happen fast for both safety and economic reasons. If you're going to be borrowing money, do it now because rates are going up. And if you don't start borrowing money to rebuild infrastructure today, it's going to get a whole lot more expensive once these bridges actually do start falling down. Shane Palchik says this time the discussion feels different. He says politicians, especially the president-elect, have to deliver. I just hope that this time, hope that we do stick to our word and we look for the working class people of today. Zach Burnett, NBC Connecticut News.